Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of the day it is that you are watching. Over the last few weeks, we have been making our way through a series called the Summer of Blessing. And today we're going to be concluding that series um, by reading a special blessing that is recorded in Mark 10 verses 13 to 16. So I'm going to read that for us now. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. Scholars often recognise that Mark's gospel is brilliant at highlighting the humanness of Jesus. Although some may criticise it for being an abbreviation or maybe a little less literary than other Gospels such as Luke's Gospel, it portrays a really unique portrait of who Jesus is. Mark's Gospel can be split into three parts, up to verse um, 30 in chapter 8. A lot of it is about Jesus' identity, who he is. In the second part that we've just read from, there's a lot about Jesus's mission. We've just read a passage about how Jesus blessed the little children. Children are a huge part of Jesus's mission. We hear lots of stories in the New Testament about children. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to us because within the whole biblical narrative, we see how God has used children for a catalyst for change, a catalyst for kingdom come, or a way of showing people his character. Whether that be uh, Samuel or David or Josiah or Isaac or the girl that told Naaman that the prophet could heal or the little boy that shared his lunch. Children are used in the kingdom of God, are part of Jesus's mission. In fact, the blessing that we've just read about in Mark's gospel, this is one of the only few times where Jesus blesses a particular group of people. And in this passage, the particular group of people are children. Children were often overlooked um, at this point in time. And Jesus, as we know, was often criticised or questioned about who he spent time with, whether that be children or tax collectors or sinners. In verse 13, we read about how the disciples rebuked the people that brought the children to Jesus. And then we read Jesus's response to that. He was indignant. That means to be angry at something that is unjust. This wasn't something small. Jesus was genuinely concerned, genuinely upset that there were people hindering the children from coming to him. We don't know why it was that the disciples rebuked the people that were bringing the children to Jesus. Some may say it's because they didn't want to interrupt Jesus, that he was very busy. Others may say that it's because the disciples saw children as being of little significance. But we know for a fact that this isn't how Jesus saw them. Why was that? Well, it was because Jesus taught them something about the characteristics of a person that possesses the kingdom of God. My sister gave birth earlier on this year to a little girl who's an absolute delight. Maybe you have children, maybe you have grandchildren, maybe you work with children, but children are so dependent on their parent or their guardian from the moment that they're brought into this world. They have to put complete trust in them. People that possess the kingdom of God must be receptive and dependent just like a child. From the blessing comes a lesson. 
How is it that we can embrace the kingdom of God like a child? Now, us as adults have years of experience or we've been through stuff that change the way that we look at Jesus, that impact the way that we look at Jesus. And a child uh, freshly brought into the world doesn't have that, doesn't have the same experience or the same understandings or biases that maybe we may have. Jesus doesn't tell us to neglect those experiences, but instead he asks for a change in attitude. He gives us uh, the option, the choice of changing how we think or how we see him. We're required to replace our self-sufficiency with the need for God's sovereignty, our moral defensiveness with a humbling before God and our scepticism to be softened by the loving God. Some of the times where I felt furthest from God are the times where I felt like I've known more. As many of you may know, uh, I went and studied at a Bible college called Moorlands in Bournemouth and I loved it. In hindsight, at the end, it was the best decision um, I'd made. But I definitely went through a time where I was reading for knowledge, reading for essays, wanting to know more. And as a result, I overcomplicated faith. And I became further from God. I was still in relationship with God, but I was just disconnected with who he was. I was disconnected with the joy that we find in salvation. I wasn't receptive. I wasn't dependent. I found my dependency in books or in sermons or in articles. We should be challenging ourselves, checking ourselves, keeping ourselves accountable to not overthinking our faith to return to Jesus like a child, to come with receptive and dependent hearts. In terms of the children that we've been entrusted with in our church families, we mustn't hinder them because they could teach us some of the most incredible lessons. We often gain wisdom from people who are maybe older than us or who are more spiritually mature than us. But we must be humble enough to learn from those younger than us what the posture is that we need to receive the kingdom of God that's not only a gift to us, but a realm that we can enter. The original word used in verse 15 to describe how Jesus blessed the children actually means to bless with an intense force. And that really highlights again how much love, how much divine love Jesus has for children. John Piper acknowledges the significance of children, that they point to something greater than ourselves, that they point to the kingdom. In the blessing comes a lesson. We need to learn from these children. John 10.10 talks all about the fullness that we have in Christ. We experience that in the kingdom of God. And I think this is why Jesus was so indignant because the disciples were preventing the children from coming to Jesus, therefore preventing the children from experiencing life in all its fullness. Some of you may know that I'm involved in a holiday club in Minnis Bay with Scripture Union. And I work with the 7s to 11s and we have so much fun. We do messy games, we do games, we do memory verse, we do worship, we do workouts, we do dramas, we do all sorts. But one of my favourite things about it is our small group time. A few years ago, um, I had a boy in my small group that I had all the way from age 8 up to age 11. And he shared with me some of the things that he'd seen. And some of those things were really tricky. And I don't know how well maybe I would have dealt with them. And I said to him, I said, oh, that must have been really hard while you're trying to keep it together and figure out, oh, why on earth has this child been put through so much? I said, oh, that must have been really difficult to see. And he replied, I know that God was with me. This child wasn't brought up in a Christian home, didn't go to Sunday school. He heard who God was. He heard who God is. He heard uh, the gospel. He had a childlike faith. He hadn't 
overthought things. And that has been one of uh, the biggest lessons that I've learned. As I shared with you earlier, some of the times where I felt furthest from God are the times where I felt I've known the most. And in our first year portfolio um, at Moreland's, uh, I wrote a little bit about um, why, I'd, why I decided to study there. And in my third year, I was reflecting on that. I was reflecting on what brought me to Moorlands. It was because I wanted to be better equipped to serve children and young people because it was a child. It was children in my small groups and other places that I'd served that really impacted my faith the most that I'm so grateful for. And I wanted to be able to serve them better. So I remembered the story of this little boy. I remembered again what it was to have a childlike faith, to come to Jesus um, as a child. We have a clear mandate here, a clear responsibility that we must encourage children. We must see them as Jesus sees them, a demographic that was then overlooked. We need to be making sure that we are bringing them front and centre, that we are humble enough to learn from them. For the Gold Hill Church family in 2020, in our month of prayer, uh, someone gave a word concerning the children and young people in our church, that they will lead the way. I don't think it's an accident that we are um, being encouraged by this scripture, that we're reading this scripture at the moment. As we um, go for our gather and go, or as we plan to settle into our uh, new hub heart home, Children need to be the centre of our mission. We need to make sure that everything that we do allows them to come forward. We need to be willing to learn from them. As I said, children were often overlooked and perhaps there's, perhaps there's a group of people uh, that God has burdened your heart with that are people that would also be overlooked. Maybe what's going on in the news at the moment has got you thinking. Can I encourage you over the next few days to have an honest conversation with God about maybe what you could do or even challenge yourself, have a conversation with God about where perhaps you or I or any of us as individuals have um, maybe overlooked specific people. The blessing that we read about in Mark 10, I find displays the gospel so beautifully a people group, a person that was overlooked, welcomed by Jesus. If you are tuning into church today for the first time, or maybe God needs to remind you of the gospel. Jesus welcomes in the overlooked, the unlikely, the sinner, welcomes them to be in relationship with him in order for us to have relationship with our heavenly father and to be joined with him eternally in heaven. When preparing today, um, I felt that God had given me a few words um, to to share with you this morning. And if you believe that they're for you, do pray about them, uh, discern them, check that they're right, weigh them up. Um, But the first was this and it is that someone has recently acknowledged that they have an overcomplicated or an overthought faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus is calling you to return to the posture of a child to come and be blessed by him to delight in the gospel again the second is someone who's experienced of church when they were younger Perhaps they felt or they were told that they were seen and not heard. But Jesus is calling you to come and experience life in all its fullness, to come to him again like a child. I really hope that you are encouraged by this um, scripture, this word this morning. I know for me, as the uh, children's ministry lead at Gold Hill, these verses are so encouraging for me, but also have challenged me Um, in the past to acknowledge the fruitfulness, the lessons that we can learn from children and the faith that they have. I'm going to pray for us now as we finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is rich in lessons. 
And Jesus, we pray today as we go about the rest of our day that you illuminate the things to us that we need to hear, that maybe we need to be um, transformed by or encouraged by. God, we pray that we put this word into action, that we are doers of the word, that we are people who allow children to be welcomed in by you, that we do not hinder them. So God, change our lives, change our hearts, change our minds um, and be with us now as we reflect on um, what your word tells us to do. Amen.